What is the science behind how far these walkie-talkies uh, traverse? So I'll tell you a quick story. I was up at about 1,500 feet, so that's four or 500 meters, really up high, using one of these, and I got in contact with someone. <laughs> All I did is I just shouted my name. Hello, this is Callum here. In uh, wherever I was, Clee Hill. Can anybody hear me? And this guy came back, and I think he was in Norfolk, which is, you know, two, three hundred miles away or something. So it's quite remarkable. So they can have a large range, but I want to do the science behind why, in the main, they don't go very far. So let's just explain how this works here. So we've got the body of a, I mean, this is a, this is a Retivis RB639. In fact, they sent me these uh, for a little review. I'll, I'll talk about them in a minute. But it could be any walkie-talkie, right? Most sort of consumer walkie-talkies are in the UHF range, which is like in the UK, it's 446 megahertz. And the USA have got GMRS and also the family radio service, FRS, which is also right up there in the UHF spectrum. Now, 450-ish megahertz, the wavelength of that is about 70 centimeters, right? A quarter wave, so the perfect antenna for a walkie-talkie for this, would be about 15 centimetres long. So it'd be kind of up here, right? Well, it's not that. So inside this, I mean, without taking it apart and cutting it open, it'll be a little coil. So it's actually extremely inefficient, the way it's working. So I've drawn here with some modelling just to show you. You don't have to get involved in all this or anything else, just to show you that the bottom half of this element here is kind of the walkie-talkie bit, and then the top half above the red dot would be the antenna, okay? We'll add in, let's say, 1.5 metres, which is about here, okay? Uh, five, five or something feet. And we can see that we've got some weird patterns on the screen. So the one on the left is if I'm holding this perfectly still like this and I key the microphone and you could visually see the RF, it looks like a donut from the top. Yeah, like a donut with a hole in the middle. It looks like that. And I can just prove that to you by clicking this button here and we'll show you what the donut looks like. So that's a kind of a donut shape. In this case, it's a donut with some extra sprinkles, but it's effectively a donut that you can see the middle of it down there. Look. So when you key the microphone, it goes boom, and you get this shape. Of course, it's not in colours. The one on the right is if we're standing on the pavement, the sidewalk, and we cut a slice of this colour chart right through the middle, right, we'll be able to see what the donut looks like from the side, okay? And that's it there. And then we can do, I mean, in science, we can measure things, all right? So we can say at one degree above the horizon, so your friend is over there, and I can run the cursor around. It'll tell me a little thing up here. It says minus 4.5 dBi. It doesn't matter what minus 4.5 means. It's, it's all relative to a different antenna if you built a different one, right? Now that, for minus 4.5, is on the basis that it's 15 centimetres, 16 centimetres long. It's not. This is all compact, so there'll be some losses. What I'm saying there is that minus four and a half would probably be about minus 14 and a half. OK, just the science there. Now, there's some really cool software called Radio Mobile. And this is it here, and I'm just about to do you a little plot to see the coverage. If you're on a hill at a thousand feet, uh, which is about 350 metres, give or take 300 metres. And the underlying ground under this hill is like 100 feet or about 35 metres. All right, so the antenna will be 1.5 metres above the ground. The gain, we decided, would be about a minus 14, say minus 15 dB. Your friend, he's also going to be holding it about head height. And his gain is also going to be minus 14.5. OK, because he's got a matching 14, just 14, matching one of these. We'll have about 450 megahertz. That doesn't really matter. The transmit power on these is, I believe, 0.5 of a watt. Uh, we won't bother with any transmission losses. There's no coax. That will be soldered directly onto the, to the board. And then we can hit submit and it will draw us a nice map 
with like Google Earth and that sort of thing, and we'll be able to see roughly how far this signal goes. So here we go. So here we go. Let's zoom into Broadway Tower, which is here. It's a place called Fish Hill. In fact, Broadway Tower is about there, but it thinks I'm about here. And we can't even get into Broadway. We might be able to get to Evesham. There's a little place called Chipping Norton. at about, I can tell you now, about 10 miles away, something like that. So it's actually not a bad coverage for a tiny walkie-talkie. I could prove it to you. We could go out. We could spend all day doing this and mapping it all. But I'm telling you, it'll be about that. OK, so that's not a bad coverage. I can't, don't have a scale on here, unfortunately, to measure it. But I know that road, Buckle Street, from there to there, is about 500 metres. OK, so that's the sort of scale. Now, we can do the same again. We can modify this coverage. Our factory's at Holly Farm. So we can do the same again, this time at Holly Farm, which is on a plateau at about 130 metres flat. It's just a plateau, all right, and there's trees around and everything else. Now, I did a test, actually. I never published a video with Carl, and we had a couple of little walkie-talkies, and I could get about 500 metres, honestly, and then I could hardly hear him. Incidentally, while this plot is, is, uh, is um, plotting, if your friend is transmitting that way and you're receiving this way, all right, you, it's going to be some loss there. So if in doubt, train your fellow compatriots to if it's ever marginal keep your walkie talkies absolutely straight up you'll get a marginally better signal so let's zoom into holly farm and have a look at the plot now it's for a start off it's a slightly different color it's all a bit yellowy that's completely flat to here and i can tell you that a lot worse than than the broadway tower one so that's that's the science behind it also at uhf trees buildings just like your cell phone, you go into a brick-built building, you know, you have a perfect signal out here, and I've come inside, and I can't, I haven't got anything. Well, that's on uh, your cell phone, be even on a higher frequency again, but you've got to remember the cell towers are on, you know, 30 metre, 100 foot towers sometimes. So they're looking down on you, and they've got very clever antennas and everything, tracking where you are, in directional and switching, all sorts of stuff. In the main, if I answer the question for you, 500 metres, what's that, 600 yards or something, or, will be your optimum range, all right? And if you're over a hill, okay, the signal can't go over a hill. If you've got a, a, even a brow of a hill, you've got a radio shadow on the other side. So if you're in populated areas, cell phones work great, all right? Use a blooming cell phone. But if you just want short, quick stab, are you there yet? Yes, I am. Can you tell me, have you cleared the library? Yes, I have. You know, and you're all in the one community or you're in the one business partner, that sort of thing. Or sort of thing. The, these will work fine. It says you're having to call the person. All right, so quick, short, sharp, stab, sharp stabs, 500 metres in the main, PMR will work fine. All right, so uh, just want to briefly mention these retivis. There's a link in the description. I've got no skin in the game uh, on these. And in fact, Fred in the shed, I'll put a link in the description. He's done a full review of this, right? Point is me doing it all over again. Fred's done it for me. He only lives down the road as well. RB639, right. So quickly, there is no control buttons, okay? So it's you've got a push to talk. So you push to talk, you go, hello, are you there? All right, that works. We've got a menu button, volume up and down, which also is the channel up and down, and a button on the top. So, and you can lock it all up, and then you'll be able to give it to someone and say, I'll talk to you on this. Hello, can you hear me? Oh. Hello, one, two, three, one, two, three, can you hear me? But that's it. So PMR446, by the way, non-removable antennas, are normally little stubby things, range is 500 metres, these work fine. I like them because they're super slim, very, very slim and, th and thin, extremely light, about 100 grams. You can slip them in your pocket. There's also a lock function so you don't accidentally switch it on. And there's a call feature where you can actually send, you know, bleep, 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 bleep tones. But Fred's done a better video than I will ever do uh, when it comes to, he's got the patience of going through all the functions and everything. And frankly, I just can't be bothered. Uh, Walkie-talkies from Retivis.
No skin in the game. I think I'll put them in the box, send them back to them and let them have them back because I'm not really a reviewer. But it was a prompt for me to show you the science behind why PMR446, GMRS and um, Family Radio Service have very limited range. Unless you've got some other gear. You may have had some fantastic experience uh, using that. Let me know in the comments. Mine was about 200 miles. Maybe you've done better. All right. Next video is coming up here. Have a jolly good day. Thanks for tuning in. Bye for now.